Sam Smyers here. Today, I want to talk about how to use Sampler in Ableton Live. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Please consider giving this video a like. And then also, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you can stay updated with future videos that are just like this. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how to use Sampler. If there's anything that I brush over or anything that I missed or anything that you didn't quite understand, go ahead and comment below on this video and I will try to get back to you and help answer any of your questions. The goal here is really just to get you up and running as quickly as possible. I want you to be able to drag in a sample and then start sampling it and manipulating it. There are some advanced features of Sampler that I'll touch on at the end of the video, but mainly 99% of people will just need to know the basics. Here is my session. I'm using Ableton Live. Let's go ahead and insert a MIDI track. We will open this up. I'm going to go to my browser here and then I'm going to go to my instruments and in my instruments, I'm going to go to sampler here and insert sampler. So this is what sampler looks like here. I'm going to now just drag and drop a sample. See, it says drop sample here. I have a sample on this audio track here. I can just click on it and drag the sample into here. If you're using something like Splice, you could also just go to Splice and drag in a sample directly from your Splice. So I could actually just click on my sample in Splice here and then drag it into Sampler like that. Now that I have the sample loaded up, I can play it. I can zoom in. I can select part of the sample that I want to actually sample with these two flag looking things. And then it says sample start and sample end. And that is determined by this flag looking thing. So I can actually drag it back and forth as well. I can also reverse the sample. And you see that red line is going backwards. I can also hit this option that says snap. And what this does is that it snaps the waveform to the zero crossing here. So basically this will help prevent any kind of clicking that might happen as you are adjusting the parameters of where you want to start the sample and end the sample. Cause sometimes you'll get this clicking sound if you hit a sample incorrectly or don't have like a fade at the beginning of a sample. Next you can change the root note. You can drag this up and down. What you wanna do is find the note of your sample and then insert that note in this root so that you can accurately map your sample across your keyboard. We have the detune here and I can detune the sample. And then scale is also going to detune the sample as well. We have the volume, we have panning options. Now it's in the center. I can pan it left or right. Now let's go to the sustain mode and basically now it's off. So if I hold down a note on my keyboard, it's going to stop playing as it hits the end of my sample. It's going to stop once I hit that sample end. If I do the sustain mode, what's gonna happen is it's going to actually loop the sample and it's going to keep sustaining it. Now what I need to do is I need to adjust my sustain. Let's put it in the parameters of my actual sample here. and see how it loops back and forth. I can also add a crossfade. Now it sounds really smooth. I can add some detune here. And then I have this other sustain mode, which is back and forth. So instead of it repeating from start to end, it's actually gonna bounce back and forth. And you can see what it's doing with this red line here. With release mode turned off, the release is going to be within the parameters of your start and end here. But let's say I want to turn this on. I could do this here, and then I could actually set another loop that this sample is going to loop inside of once I release my key. Now, first I should add some release to my sample here, like that. And what it's gonna do is as it is releasing, instead of the release looping inside of this entire loop, it's just going to loop within this release loop that I set. So notice how it bounces back and forth in this little loop here. Or I could do something like this. And then the release is going to loop in this little loop here. 
So that's just another option that you can use to adjust how your release sounds. And then I have the crossfade here I can add to my release loop and also the detune. Then you have interpolation here, and this is going to be the algorithm it uses to adjust the pitch when you're playing your keys across the keyboard. You're going to be sampling the actual sample. So best is going to sound the best, but it's going to be the most CPU intensive. I'm just going to put it at good right now. Let me go ahead and turn off my release here, turn it down. Then we have RAM. This is going to load the sample into your computer's RAM. This might be useful if you are having trouble loading the beginning of that sample. Most of the time, you should probably just like leave this off though. Then we have this B for both. It's going to show both the left and right. Then we have M for mono. It's going to combine both of the signals left and right or both of the channels left and right. And then we have left here and right. And then we have this option here where I can just expand the waveform size. Now let's go to the pitch and oscillator options. I can actually add an oscillator here and I can choose a type. Now it's set to a sine wave. And if I turn it up, then we can hear that modulation. And down here, we've got FM for frequency modulation or AM for amplitude modulation. And you can adjust it here. You've got the coarse, you've got the fine. You have some options with adjusting how it's going to sound. Let's turn up the fine here. So it's gonna be very subtle. It's almost not really doing anything. And then you have your A, D, S, and R. So you can make some adjustments to the actual envelope. You have your attack, decay, and release. And you can also adjust the slopes here, or if you just tap on this, square and triangle here you can adjust the slopes in these boxes here down here we've got the pitch envelope so let me turn that off and if i do the amount here then you can hear the pitch is changing at the beginning of that sample and same thing i have my a d s and r my attack decay sustain and release and let me turn this amount off what i could also do is do this spread here and for a sample that is mono if i turn the spread on it's actually going to take that mono sample and duplicate it and detune one of the signals and basically spread it out so it has this like chorus effect. And then you have transpose, detune, and this is gonna be your glide options here. And portamento. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Turn off the pitch filter. Now let's go to our global filter here. This is going to be the global A, D, S, and R. My attack, decay, sustain, and release here. So I could slow down the attack. I could increase the release and do a bunch of things with my A, D, S, and R there. Here is the volume. I have a filter here. I have a filter envelope, so I could turn this up and then maybe slow down the attack. And then I have some options for adding drive and also the slope here. These are gonna be some options for changing how that filter sounds. So let's go ahead and turn that filter off in the filter envelope. Let's go ahead and put the attack back to the normal. Down here I have pan. I have some randomness to that pan I can add by adjusting this percentage here and then time. And then we've got some other things down here that are going to make some different changes to your panning and how that interacts. So then you have this thing called a loop here. So I could actually do a loop here. And now if I hit the key, it's actually going to loop the settings on this AD SNR that I set. I don't want that right now. Let's go ahead and just turn that off. Let's go to our modulation tab. So now I have some options for some modulation here. I can add a envelope to let's say my pitch here. And let's go ahead and increase the amounts. And then I could slow down the attack. And you can do two of those because there's A and B. I also have an LFO one and I can do an LFO on my volume here. So let's turn up the volume. And there I'm just adjusting the frequency or I could do pan or the pitch or the filter. And now LFO two, I could actually add an LFO two to any of these other parameters here. So I could do it to the pitch and let's increase the amount. And 
and I could add it to another parameter here in B. And then I could also add a third LFO if I wanted to. And now we have the MIDI section, and so if you're going to be doing any kind of performance and need to map any of the keys on your MIDI keyboard to any of the parameters, then you can do that here. So also on this MIDI tab, we have the range, and I can set my pitch bend amount. So I like to do this at 12 semitones, and then if I use my pitch bend on my keyboard, it's going to be 12 semitones in either direction. Now finally, let's go to the zone section. The sampler is actually going to be a multi-sample sampler, which means that I can load in multiple samples into this device. So for example, if you have a grand piano, there are going to be different sounds for the velocity of every note, and every note on the low end of the piano is going to sound different from the notes at the high end of the piano. So for grand piano VSTs, that's why they take up so much space is because there's actually thousands and thousands of samples probably in the actual sampler. So you could actually create something like that in this sampler and we'll keep it simple for now. What I'll do is let's go ahead and just delete this. I'm going to add in some samples here. I have got an N1, I've got some M1 piano samples. So let's go ahead and load these in to my sampler, I'm just gonna drag them in like that. And let's go ahead and make this screen a bit smaller. So if I right click here, I've got some options. I've got small, medium, large, that is just the view. But notice that every single sample now is spread across the entire keyboard. So if I play a note on my keyboard, then it's gonna play all of the samples at once. What I need to do is distribute all of these across the keys. What I can do is right click and do distribute ranges equally. And now it is distributing these samples across my keyboard. But it's not quite right because this is gonna be C0 and this is C negative two. So I just have to adjust them and I'd basically go through them all and adjust them to make them right. So now let me go ahead and play them. That sounds right. So I just did a couple of those just to save some time and I can make some adjustments to also, if I do want these notes to overlap, I could adjust the fades here. So I'm adjusting these fades here to make them blend together, these notes blend together. And I have this LIN here and if I click on it, it changes to POW. So that's linear in power. That's determining how your fade is going to be either a linear fade or a power fade. You can go to here and click on key. As you can see, these are going to be mapping the samples across the keyboard. And I can also change the velocities. Maybe I don't want the velocities to be zero to 127. Maybe I want it to be like 100 to 127. And then I could make an adjustment there. And then you have this select sample zone option, which actually I'm not really sure what you would need this for. So now if I just right click on here, I have some options to sort them, sort them by key. And also if they are different volumes, then I can normalize all of the volumes. And if you are creating a device like this, after you do all this work setting it up, just make sure that you go and save it as a preset and you just hit this save button here. So that about does it for sampler. If I went over anything a little bit too quickly, then go ahead and comment below anything that you want clarification on. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please go ahead and give it a like. And also if you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. And finally, if you are really looking to improve your mixing skills, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. This is a full all-in mixing course that I created that will help you create some of the best records of your life from the comfort of your own home. I'll put a link down below for you to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.